Well, hello everyone and welcome to our first introductory webinar on cutting your electric bill down to a couple dollars a day. If you want to save money on your summer and winter electric bill, you've come to the right place. I'm Bill Caruso and I'm very pleased you're here. I live in a 3,300 square foot home in Dallas where we see daily 100 degree weather for three to four months out of the year. And yes, that's hot. That's very hot. <laughs> and such a large house typically costs about $200 to $300 a month to cool down. But in fact, I pay less than $50 a month for my electric bill, and I don't use solar or wind sources, and my methods have nothing to do with kooky earth rhythms or magnetic fields. As an engineer for many years, I set my abilities in the physical sciences and in business to evolve a system which knocked my monthly electric bill down from about $200 a month to what it is today. So you may ask, how did he accomplish this? Well, it didn't happen overnight. It evolved out of five years of experimentation. And to this day, I'm continuing to experiment with various ways to make my home efficient. Uh, lately, I've been looking into inexpensive automation techniques, which I'll tell you more about later. For now, let's just dive into the 10 things you need to avoid when trying to cut your energy bills. I tried these things over the years, by the way, and found them to be somewhat useful, but overall not cost effective for lowering actual energy bills. Many of these have a false economy in most cases, so let's start the count. Number one, put solar electric panels on your roof. Uh, after all, it's free energy, right, from the sun. Well, it's not free at all. These things cost about $20,000 to put on your roof and to put the system together properly. Once they're on your roof, you have to ask yourself, how are you ever going to fix your roof if you have any problems with leaks and such? And will the people repairing your roof have to tear these things off of your house in order to get to the leak? Um, how are they going to work on your house? Uh, number two, will these things damage your roof? You know, when they put solar panels on your roof, they have to put them on some sort of uh, a suspension system. Well, when they put that on your roof and drill holes in your roof, is that going to cause a leak? You know, how are you going to get your roof repaired? Now, one thing that they often don't tell you is that uh, solar panels on a house do not increase the value of the house by any means. In fact, they decrease it. And it's very simple to envision. Imagine somebody coming to look at your house. They look at the house. The first thing they do is they look at your roof and they say, what's that? And the agent says, well, that's a solar energy collection system. And the people say, oh, what's that? And then they start to say, well, that's a, and the buyers just simply say, no, I don't want that thing on my house. It looks dangerous. It looks ugly. No, let's just look at another house. And that's going to bring the, that's going to mean that you have to compromise the price of your house in order to sell your house quickly. So you may save on energy, but you're going to lose so much more of that on your home value when you put these on your home. How are you going to keep them clean? I mean, if you have anything that causes a dirt or, or any occlusion of light that comes into your solar panels, you're going to have a problem. And obviously, the one of the biggest problems is birds poop on solar panels. Let's face it, that's what they do. When you knock out just a few square inches of a solar panel, that pretty much knocks out the balance uh, within the solar panel of all the cells that are in there. And that terribly cuts down your efficiency. So who's going to go up there and clean that off? You want to go up on your roof every week? Uh, what's that going to do to the condition of your roof, right? You know, another thing to consider is the warranty that you have on your solar panels. Uh, we have improvements going on in the solar industry constantly every year. And so because of that, you see old technologies replacing new. And that means the companies go out of business all the time. Uh, you may have a 15-year warranty on your solar panel, but what good is it if the company's only going to be around for four more years and then fold up? And we see, and that happens all the time. You know, even though it's a low voltage, these things generate about 60 amps typically. Certainly, if it could weld metal, you know these things can cause fires. What if you have some animal gnawing away at a at a cable? It's a 60 amp cable. It's not going to be a good result. You're going to have a fried animal up there, possibly catching fire, or the cable itself could uh, overheat because it's been uh, because the cross-sectional area has been chipped away so badly with their chewing. Any of these can cause a lot of heat and a lot of fire. So if it does cause a fire, if there is a problem, if they do get broken, uh, are these things insurable? What are your premiums that you have to pay on insurance for a system like this? You know, you begin to add these things up and you see it's really not worth paying this. And you know, just the $20,000 to put the system up, you could take that $20,000 and put it in the stock market with an 8% return, which is a typical return for the stock market. You could use that money to pay your electric bills, okay? And the funny thing is the stock market doesn't fall apart because of hail damage. <laughs> you know, some people have the idea that they can sell electricity back to the electric company. Well, that used to work okay with the mechanical meters that didn't know which way the electricity was going, whether the electricity was going into your house for going out. But now they have smart meters, and the smart meters know when electricity is going in your house and when it's going out. And sadly, when it's going in your house, 
they charge you about 10 cents or so a kilowatt hour. When it's going out of your house, they buy that electricity for about a penny a kilowatt hour. So you can do the math. You can see it's just not that great of an investment. You're never going to get rich generating electrical power for the power company. Don't worry. They already have their own generators. They don't need you. <laughs> okay, how often must these things be inspected? Who knows? And who inspects them? You know, you're going to pay somebody to go up there, somebody who's qualified to inspect them. That's going to be expensive. Uh, do they produce clean, cheap and clean electricity? Well, it's definitely not cheap, and as for it being clean, no, it's not. It's filled with spikes and harmonics that can damage some of your appliances. Uh, really, truthfully, you're not going to find any way to get cheaper, cleaner, safer electricity than that which you get out of your wall. Believe me, folks, I've tried for five years. It's just not out there. Now, if you're in a place where you can't get copper from the power company, if, you can't, if they can't run some copper out to your house to give you electricity, if you live in the middle of nowhere, then yeah, definitely then you need some solar energy or some sort of an alternative. But I'm willing to assume that 99.99% of you out there are not living under those conditions right now. So method number two that some people try, they try changing their electricity provider. Now this might help. This might save you a few percentage points uh, one way or the other. It might save you as much as 10%. But really, I want to come up with some methods where you save a lot more than that. And I want to see you save, um, say, a 40% return on investment. I really do. And we can do much better than uh, just changing electricity providers. You also have the, the problem there with uh, having contracts that may be inflexible. All kinds of problems with that. Um, let's see here. Item number three, add a bunch of insulation to your roof. Well, you know, certainly insulating your roof is a good idea, but the question is how much should be up there? I mean, if you already have 12 inches, is that sufficient for where you live? Do you need 24? Do you only need six? You know, find out before you go and buy a bunch of insulation. And something to keep in mind is that if you don't insulate properly, you can create moisture problems in your roof. And that can lead to the black mold here in Texas is just tearing houses to pieces. Uh, you don't want to have a moisture problem. Not only does your moisture cause mold problems, but also moisture takes away from the insulation qualities of your, of your uh, insulation. And so you don't want to ruin things by incorrectly adding insulation to your house. Uh, it may not be cost effective at all to do that. You really have to check that out carefully before you do that. In most cases, uh, most houses I've seen are very well insulated. There's no problem there. Number four, I've seen commercials where window salesmen want to change out all your windows. Well, I'm just going to tell you, my house is built in 1991. It's been around for, what, 25 years or so now, a little more than 25 years. And I have the original windows here. A couple of them needed to be replaced because they were broken. But replacing those windows had nothing to do with my energy-saving techniques. Uh, there are other very specific techniques that can be used. And really, the thermal energy that you lose through a window is insignificant, whether you have an old window or a new window. Now, if the window's broken, yeah, definitely replace it. There's no doubt. If you've got a hole in your window, for gosh sakes, you know, replace it. But if your window's not broken, keep your window Try something different if you really want to save energy. And I'll give you those tips uh, in my course. Uh, living overly frugal, okay, so you can be hot in the summer, you can be cold in the winter, and you can scream at your kids 24 hours a day about leaving the lights on, leaving the doors open, leaving the refrigerator open. <laughs> That'll save you a few pennies, but it'll make your kids hate you. <laughs> and you're just going to get ulcers from it. It's really not worth your effort to uh, scream and yell at everybody in your house about saving energy. Now, you don't want them to be careless in ways. You do want to talk to them. Uh, but we all forget things from time to time, especially when we're teenagers. So uh, give them a break and uh, find some other ways to save energy, okay? Install a wood stove in your home. And this is a fantastic idea, quite honestly, if you want to heat your home up. I had one up in Colorado when I lived there. And it was wonderful, you know. I, especially the first year, I loved hauling in wood. I loved chopping wood. It made me feel like I was a teenager again, chopping wood. And... It was a wonderful thing, and, and I was getting free energy, you know, I was just uh, burning this wood. But it had its draw, drawbacks, and that is I constantly was worried about, you know, uh, kind of an open flame inside the house. Could this possibly set the house on fire? That wasn't something to worry about. Now, I often, I don't hear about very many houses catching fire from wood stoves, but I know that it happens. And you might have to, problems with uh, restrictions on burning wood as well that you have to deal with. And, uh, but one drawback that I definitely know is a fact, 
and I know this for a solid fact, and that is that a wood-burning stove will heat up your house in the wintertime, but it will never cool your house in the summertime. <laughs> we want some method that both saves money in the winter and in the summer. So I have some methods that are much better than a wood stove. Um, I don't completely hate wood stoves. I love them to death. If you have one, definitely use it. But if you're planning on saving a whole lot of energy, especially if you live in Texas where it's so hot, wood stove isn't really going to help you that much. Number seven, throw out your perfectly well-working central air conditioner to buy a new one. Now, this is one that air conditioning salesmen love to tell you about, about how much energy the new system saves. Well, I'll tell you, my house, like I said, it's built in 1991, and I'm using the original air conditioner that was here. You know, sure, it needs some maintenance from time to time. All air conditioners, all machines need that. And I've had lots of people tell me that I should replace it, and that will help me with my energy bills. Well, as it turns out, my system of saving energy has nothing to do with the age of that <laughs> of that air conditioner. Now, it wouldn't surprise me if one day the thing had a catastrophic failure and died, okay? It wouldn't surprise me at all. And I'll replace it when that happens. But as for right now, the thing works perfectly, and I suspect that yours works perfectly as well. When you have a heat exchanger completely blow out, or possibly even the compressor blow out completely, then you can consider replacing your air conditioner, but I don't recommend it. Okay, number eight, install an attic fan, which I thought was a perfectly sensible idea. I mean, if you go up into an attic, uh, most attics are just hot as the blazes during the summer, especially here in Texas. I mean, you don't want to be in one for very long. So why not draw that hot air out and replace it with just air in the atmosphere? I mean, that, that sounds like a pretty good idea. And it really is. It really is. The problem is that you have to be very careful because in many cases, people put in attic fans. And rather than drawing air from the outside to vent the attic properly, in a lot of cases, they're drawing air from inside the house. They're drawing air-conditioned air okay, processed air up into the attic. And that's certainly not what you want to do because then it gets drawn out. All you're doing is drawing your good air, your air-conditioned cool air, into the attic. And of course, if you're doing that, you're drawing in air from every crack in your house from outside. So the attic fans don't necessarily work unless they're properly designed. So you've got to be careful with that. Even so, I haven't seen any studies that show that an attic fan truly decreases your energy bill. And my method, by the way, I use in my house I don't have an, uh, an attic fan here. I have a couple turbines in the roof, and they're spinning all the time, even in the light breeze. And still, my energy cost is about $50 a month without the attic fan. Am I going to spend money to have one put in? Probably not. And so I don't highly recommend it to anybody else. The turbines, though, I think are just a sensible idea. Number nine is kind of a wacky one that I've considered myself, and that is to squirt water on your condenser outside when it's running. And you can do that in form of a mister or an actual sprinkling system. And this seems like a good idea. I thought it would be a fantastic idea. Thermodynamically, it makes sense. The problem with it, though, is that you're going to end up getting deposits, calcium deposits on the fins of your air conditioner. And it's going to ruin the air conditioner uh, in general, probably within about two years. Now, if your AC is on, the last le on its last leg and you think it's about to, to fall apart, then definitely try it out and let us know how it works out. Uh, but if you have a new air conditioner and you start uh, squirting water on it, um, start saving up for another new air conditioner in about three years because you're going to need it. <laughs> uh, number 10, buy a gasoline generator or a perpetual motion machine or some other alternative energy gimmick. Well, uh, honestly, these things are not worth it. The perpetual motion idea is just a lie in itself. You'll lose money if you invest in these, I promise you. Thermodynamically, a perpetual motion has never been achieved and uh, more than likely never will be achieved. Uh, the gasoline generator is actually a good idea if you ex expect any extended blackouts in your area. Uh, it's a wise thing to prepare for, but uh, on a long-term long basis, generating your electricity from a gasoline generator is most definitely very expensive, so I uh, don't think you're going to replace the power company with a, uh, with a gasoline generator. That's just not going to happen. And yes, I, I tried out solar energy and I insulated my home, but neither of these turned out to be very cost effective on their own as their implementation did not give me a return that was any better than the return on investment from the stock market. Uh, I found that rather than paying uh, to use these methods, I would have been better off just investing, investing my money in the stock market, getting an 8% return, and then using that money to pay off my elevated electricity bill. For you, for normal America, <laughs> my experiments have evolved the system by which you will use normal power coming out of your meter, but you will utilize it in an economically efficient manner. 
In order for you to lower your energy bill, you need to learn how to buy and store energy and then utilize it cheaply. I'm going to make you an expert on this, but it's going to require that you do nothing that's unsafe. I teach several levels of this, and you can go as far as you're technologically comfortable. The simplest level, which 90% of people typically adopt, requires about $120 to implement and about four hours of time. If you're in the 10% who want to fully automate your house, complete with a laptop controlled drapes and outlets and the thermostat and even a full security system, we can go there. But first, let's start out simple. You know, $120 and four hours of your time will be about all most people need to bring their utilities down significantly. I'm very confident that you will be able to bring your utility expenses down with my system. Now these methods I've evolved don't require a lot of time and money and you'll definitely don't have to be an engineer to understand what we talk about in the seminar. Within two days of incorporating even the first two modules of this seminar series, you will immediately see your bills drop to values I've mentioned. Now I say it will require about four hours of your time to incorporate my system, and you might need to twist a screwdriver a few times to get these results. Uh, but you don't have to crawl into your house or, God forbid, and crawl into your hot attic uh, all day in the hot sun. I'm, I'm in my late 50s, and I can tell you that my days of crawling in hot attics are O-V-E-R over. <laughs> I don't do that anymore. There are today eight webinars that I've written and that guide you through simple steps to reproduce what I've done in my home. And I'm always coming up with other ideas from other people and posting them on our private web page, which you'll have access to as, as members. Uh, by the way, I did not do this through the typical insulate and seal doors and windows uh, routine. Uh, this is not that kind of a course. This is not, we don't use those methodologies. Uh, although these are good ideas to start out you're saving money, they're not enough to save you large amounts on your electric bill. I still teach to you about them in one of the seminars, and they're important from an ecological point of view. But financially, there are much more effective ways and measures that you can use to improve on your energy costs. A $50 trip down to the hardware store will get you pretty much all that you need to take care of common problems such as leaking doors and windows, which rob some dollars from you each month, by the way. In reality, these are not the major things that you need to be paying attention to using my methods, but I still teach it to you as a matter of um, responsibly conserving energy. Uh, really, it's the right thing to do, and I have one module where we talk about it in length. Many of the methods I learned, by the way, came to me through the optimization methods I learned at Motorola and applied through more than 30 years of my engineering career. Wherever mathematics still works, my methods work. So what's involved in my overall seminar? Well, I have eight webinars that you can enjoy in your own schedule. You're going to learn how to buy energy and how to store energy uh, for use in the most economical ways. I'll teach some optional simple physics about home energy and economics that you may apply to other areas in your life, by the way, to help you become more energy conversant with others. You don't absolutely need to know the physics module, but I keep that part as much fun as possible so that you can generate new ideas of your own that can ex enhance and expand these methods that I teach. Uh, I've started a Facebook page, a private Facebook page. It's one of the bonuses of this um, taking this seminar, and it's designed especially for you to learn from other people and to share with them your success stories and your questions. Okay, learning the physics and economics gives us all a common language for entering into discussion on energy savings. So I'd really like for everyone to watch those optional videos when they get the chance. And I think you'll like them a lot, especially if you found physics confusing in your high school or in, in, in your college. After, after learning from these videos, you'll be able to spot many ripoffs that are offered on the web regarding perpetual en energy gimmicks that don't and can't ever possibly work. You know, I both laugh and cry when I see people post these nonsense about perpetual energy machines because I know these schemes offer a great laugh to all of us who know something about physics, but it's also very sad because there are people who are paying them good money for these uh, bogus ripoffs. We can definitely talk about these bogus ads, and we can talk about continue talking about things that don't work, but these are not really the focus of our group. Our focus is not so much on what doesn't work, but what does work, and I regularly go through the postings as needed to those ideas. Of course, you can always contact me directly, but I really want everyone to see your questions as they pop up. Now, I've had some people tell me that I should be charging five to six hundred dollars for uh, this program that I run. And naturally, I agree it's worth that much. Uh, however, I've uh, found a majority of people uh, with my marketing surveys that they suggest more like uh, two to three hundred, which is much more reasonable for our pocketbooks. 
And still, it's not outside the, the realm of, of what would be reasonable for a course like this, I think. Personally, though, I'd like to get this plan into as many people's hands as possible. Really, I'm trying to uh, get sponsorship either from a grant or from corporate sponsors who will keep the price for this seminar series as low as possible. I know the methods I put together will benefit our society, so I'm looking for a certain critical mass of participants right now. And obviously, I'd like as many partners as possible in this effort, so I'm keeping the price low. People of all kinds are telling me they want me to try this out. So the best way I could do this was to set up these webinars, which is not cheap, by the way. Uh, it's so much more expensive to try to do it in person. That was definitely out of the question. So uh, I think Internet webinars just make the most sense. What's more, with a webinar, you can rewind me and listen to it again. You can shut me off for a little while and take a bathroom break, come back. You know, it's, it makes so much more sense to do it on, on a pre-recorded webinar. So keeping all this stuff in mind, keeping these matters in mind, I've settled on a price of $149 for the seminar series. Now that pretty much covers my cost and uh, I get a little bit of a profit for it. That certainly doesn't make up for all the uh, hours I've spent in the past, but, uh, but I really do want to get the word out about this system. Now naturally for people listening though, there should be a discount for people who are energy aware and want to begin taking immediate action. So during this seminar for you, the amount is lowered to only $99, and this only applies during this webinar session. Don't tell my marketers about this $99 deal, by the way. They're going to kill me. <laughs> but despite that, I do want to see you get involved. Now, there's something very important that I want you to know, and that is that I am 100% confident that if you implement these things I've suggested in this seminar, that you'll definitely save at least $100 every six months on the utilities for the rest of your life. Uh, if you are dissatisfied with this course because you haven't saved any money after six months, I offer a 100% money-back guarantee on this seminar. You know, I'm a results-based electrical engineer. I've been doing this stuff for 35 years. And really, I don't want to collect any money from anybody for whom the system didn't work. Uh, physics, mathematics, and my own personal experience with my system promises me that anyone who uses it will save tons of money on their utility bill. So I offer this guarantee with absolutely no hesitation. Uh, now, you can sign up for this $99 deal at any time during the webinar. I'll be talking about some other things in the meantime regarding your saving tons of money on your electric bill. Uh, number one, we welcome you and we want you to do an initial home assessment. This involves uh, taking an inventory of your house, finding out what is using the most electricity and, and uh, what isn't. Number two, we look at uh, the way that you're heating hot water. We take a hot water assessment and we find out how you're heating your water and what could be done to improve that. On seminar number three, we take a final home assessment and um, we make sure that we know everything about the way your house is operating. And along the way, we're making small improvements and we're looking at uh, what the effect is, okay? Number four, your refrigerator actually takes a lot of energy to run throughout the month. So we want to find ways to safely keep your food preserved and refrigerated. And uh, we want to cut down the price on your refrigeration. And I found some really good methods for doing that. Let's see, the fifth seminar is for the heating of your house and cooking cooking and this involves the energy generation that you have within your within your the walls of your home for cooking and also for heat generation we want to make sure that we heat your house properly for the winter at the lowest possible cost and we want to make sure that you can cook your your food without having it tax your cooling system too much in the summertime uh, number six, the, the, the sixth seminar is on battery storage and on some more conventional electrical things uh, such as battery storage. We're going to look a little bit at the solar systems and some alternatives, but we do want you to know about battery storage because you may have brownouts or blackouts in your area. We want you to be prepared for those properly. A bonus seminar. Number one is, an, is a look at your inexpensive home automation. We're not going to go heavy into it. I may just set up another seminar series where we talk about home automation. I, I have a group down here in Dallas where we look at this just for fun and we compare lots of different brands and ideas and so on. And I'd like to make our knowledge available to you someday with the home seminar uh, if I see an interest in it. You have to write to me and let me know. The extra bonus seminar is the Physics and uh, Economics of Energy Improvement. And this is the one I told you about. This is the one that has the math behind all this system. And it's everything that your inner nerd would ever want to ask about. So <laughs> I think you'll enjoy it. I'll make it fun. Now, I've included in my packet a sheet for you to summarize where you're using your energy. This is the energy audit that I told you about. It's in your worksheet. It's sort of an informal energy audit for uh, electricity. And there are two good ways to collect this data. One is to measure directly, and the other is to look for a label on your appliance where these numbers are stamped in. Now, measuring it is more accurate, of course, uh, but reading the label is pretty accurate if you 
think you can trust the manufacturer to tell you the truth, which you probably can because you're going to find that number off of the UL sticker, okay, the Androiders Laboratory sticker. I found that most small appliances have accurate labels, but major appliances, which take the most of your electrical power, are the worst at reporting these because these appliances are not on constantly. They're sometimes on, sometimes off. So you have to take that into account when you look at their total energy draw. Now here's another bonus that I offer people who take my course. I know that you're loving these uh, bonuses, by the way. <laughs> I have a bunch of these things, they're called kilowatt meters, and I rent them out for a small charge. Now what in the world is a kilowatt meter? Well, here's one. It's, it's a meter, it's a little thing that's used to measure the amount of electricity that's needed to run your appliances. And it's simple to use, you just plug it into the wall, and then you plug your appliance into it, and you read the power that's being used. These things have a bunch of other features, but this is pretty much the only feature that you're going to be using this for. It's a fantastic instrument and surprisingly very accurate. Uh, it's a wonderful device, and it, but it does have a certain drawback. And then as I found that people who were buying these things uh, were using them for about a day or so to collect data and then never using them again. And by the way, that included me. I've owned my kilowatt meter for about six years and it's been plugged into the wall for a whopping five days. And that's only because three of those days it was plugged in and I forgot about it. So there's no point in paying a lot of money for these things and then just using them for a little bit of time. So I came up with an idea to start saving you money right off the bat with this program. And that is that we can we can collectively use these these items. I've, I'm, I'm buy, I've, I've bought a whole bunch of them and um, we can just shuttle them around using uh, the post office, the two-day service, to shuttle these things around the country to each other. Small wear and tear fee and, and postage. I can send you these things for you to use and for you to send back. Now additionally I found these temperature loggers. You're going to want to have about five of these and you're going to want to record some temperatures in your house throughout a, maybe a two or three day period. And the way you use them is very simple. Uh, I send them to you and they're recording data, they're recording temperature data. Every 30 seconds they take a data point. So they're doing it in the, at, the, at the post office, they're doing it in the truck, they're doing it all over, but they'll be doing it at your house. And they, they hold 32,000 measurements, so certainly it's not going to run out of memory space. Uh, so what you do is you just put them where you want to have them in your home for a few days. You record where you put them, maybe take a picture where you put them as well, and then uh, send them back to me along with the kilowatt meter, and uh, I'll download the data and send you an, an Excel sheet. Uh, with some graphs and you can see what those temperatures were. Now, this is going to be very important in figuring out how well this system works for you, okay? Now the kilowatt meter costs about $40 and the temperature loggers cost about $20 each. And uh, you use them only once really for about a week. I can send you a USPS a post office box with a kilowatt meter and five temperature loggers. And you'll use them and send them back to me and uh, you'll save big time on buying these things yourself. All you pay for in, in, with our program is shipping and a few bucks of expected wear and tear on the things. It's one of the bonuses for partnering with us in this, ener in this effort to save on energy costs. Now the kilowatt meter won't help you much with really large appliances like heat pumps and central air conditioners and kitchen stove tops or electric water heaters. Uh, for these, the two best ways to measure their electricity draw is either to toggle the appliances on and off while watching your smart meter outside the house or to just read the electrical ratings off the label on the side of the appliance. Now, sorry folks, you probably will have to crawl into your attic to read this on your air conditioner, which is why you're better off with a smart meter. In this case, you can just read them from the side of your house. When you check the power draw of your air conditioner, by the way, if you're reading the plates, remember to look at the rated power off of your outdoor compressor, which is on the outside of the house, and also on the inside, on your evaporator inside the, the house as well. Uh, the smart meter is terrific in this case because if you know how to use it, you don't have to worry about reading inside or outside anything. You just read the power, turn on the appliance, read the change in power, and, and that's how much power the thing takes. Here's what, here's what one of these smart meters looks like. Now that brings us to one other point. You know, if you've seen these big yellow stickers on appliances in the stores telling you how much it costs to run these appliances during the year, don't believe it. Uh, these stickers are not regulated by any responsible agency so far as I can tell. And they are strictly marketing tools. They may not be relied on to tell you what it actually costs to run these, these appliances. Now your kilowatt meter is actually going to tell you the absolute truth about the energy draw that, that these appliances have. So you can compare those readings with those stickers, but uh, unfortunately you probably won't be able to use the kilowatt on uh, some of your big items. And definitely tell us what you found on your Facebook page uh, regarding what you read. Uh, you might find some discrepancies that we would all like to know about and comment on. If you're like me, you're going to have a lot of fun with this. Now, the temperature sensors are much simpler to use 
You just put them wherever you need them, and please don't press any of the buttons, since I've already pressed them. Uh, they're very hard to press, um, so don't go out of your way to press them. You just write down where you put them and, and maybe take a picture. And in a few days, just mail them back to me, and I'll extract the data from you. For there, from there, you'll have some good ideas where you need to pay attention in your home for uh, energy leak locations. Okay, well, we're nearing the end of this webinar, so we're going to run out of time that I can extend the $99 offer to you. If you thought the kilowatt meter was fun, you'll have a real kick with the next six webinars when we get into actual cost-saving methods that you can begin immediately. So enjoy the rest of the webinar, but be sure to sign up. In the course, you'll learn how to put these energy saving methods on autopilot. You can either tend to these details each day or you can apply these principles and automate them so you have nothing to remember each day. In fact, you need to learn how to put your, auto, your house on autopilot to maximize these savings. There's no major, major changes you need to make in your property to reduce, to reduce your uh, power bills, by the way. But I would suggest that you, you have about $250 on hand that you can spend in the hardware store to implement these solutions. These purchases will pay for themselves within about six months of the system. I try to make it a point to tell you specifically what to purchase and some alternatives where you can find it. And I've done a lot of the shopping for you. Okay, well, we're winding up now. And if, if you follow the seminar up to now, you know that you're intrigued. And what better way to satisfy your curiosity than to get involved now? I don't want you to always wonder what could have been. For just $99, you can find out what took me about five years of my experiments, research, and thousands of dollars to learn. Not to mention putting myself and my home into danger until I learn about the sensible economical ways to save on the energy bills. Uh, $99 is just too little to pass up to learn these ideas. And so I'm looking forward to your snapping some pictures of your electricity bills and posting them on our Facebook page. I'm wondering, can you beat my best months? And that's a challenge. I, I challenge you. Maybe you can have a contest with a friend of yours about seeing who can get their uh, energy bill the lowest. Uh, you can bet them lunch each month. And um, if you're betting up against somebody who hasn't taken this course, I promise you this is a great way to save even more money. <laughs> you get free lunches. <laughs> Oh, something I forgot, almost forgot about, speaking of friends, this is very important. If you've been referred to us, to this webinar, by a friend, be sure to put his name and email address in the slot here when you sign up so we can send them $5. We want to know who you were referred by. This has to be somebody who obviously has already signed up for the course. And we extend this to you, by the way, as well. For every person that you refer to us uh, who signs up and stays on with us for six months, uh, we send you $5. And there's no limit to this. If you refer us to 10 people, you get $50. If you refer to us to 20 people, you essentially get this course for free. We'd love to see the entire world sign up for this course. So if you get 7.5 billion people to sign up, uh, we'll give you $5 for each one, I promise you. <laughs> but it's got to be 7.5 billion, every one of them. <laughs> And that's just our way of saying thanks, by the way. We really do appreciate it. By the way, if you want to form some sort of affiliation with us and you have a website or you know where you can advertise to get people uh, to sign up for this, uh, definitely that's within limits. We'd like to see what your advertisement is beforehand so we can make sure that it follows our ethical um, guidelines. And we're sure that most of you are ethical. There will be no problem. But uh, yes, indeed, they, they have these uh, pay-per-click, paper what is it, paper order? I don't know completely how this stuff works. But um, if there's some way to trace uh, somebody signing up to you and they can write your name in the referral page or uh, something like that, then uh, definitely we want to uh, reward you with $5. It's a very worthwhile program, so we hope that you'll call us and affiliate with us if you, if you can do that. Okay, well, folks, I know your time is valuable, so I won't waste it. I, I promised myself I would keep this first talk short, so we'll wrap it up for the day. Congratulations to you if you've already signed up. I've given you some homework to do in measuring your energy usage in your home before the first webinar session. Now, definitely we want you to partner with us early in this movement, and that begins with signing up and collecting some data. Now, if you want to wait and use the kilowatt meter for uh, that next week, well, that's just fine. That's even better. Uh, you know, I mentioned to you, it's a funny thing, I sometimes refer to this as a movement, and I really think this is a movement. There are people I have met over the years who want to save money on their electrical bills, and they do so because they're being economical, but also because they're interested in improving their self-sufficiency and also interested in improving our environment and our dependence on foreign oil. You know, whether you're, whether you're a climate change advocate or a climate change denier, whether you're Republican, whether you're Democrat, whether you're black or white or green or yellow, none of that matters here. The important thing is that we really do 
want to use fewer resources, fewer natural resources in our world. And it protects our, it protects our nation, it protects our environment, and it protects our pocketbooks. And I just can't think of any better common source that brings us together than saving energy. It, it's really a very worthwhile uh, purpose. It's really what I would call a movement. Now, it wasn't the original intent of this course, all this political stuff, by the way, but it's something of, of interest that many people have who have spoken to about this. Uh, we really do need to end our energy dependence on other countries, and we do want to save our, our environment. So uh, these are good reasons to get involved. Now, people who sign up for courses like these love the challenges of seeing who can achieve the lowest electricity bill. I know. I might just be, uh, I might just start a contest for this. So I'm wondering, maybe you can write to me and say, uh, what, what would be a sufficient prize for a contest like this? And uh, what would be the rules? Uh, you can let me know on the Facebook page. I'm always very curious. Uh, or you can write to me directly if you're not yet a member. That's fine. Okay, so let's leave the course open for the next five minutes. Uh, you've been asking questions, and I've tried to answer you offline whenever possible. Uh, obviously, this webinar is pre-recorded for obvious reasons. Uh, uh, one of them is that I'm an engineer, not an actor, and they've had to edit out all my ums and ahs throughout this entire thing, and uh, God bless the people who had to edit those things out. Uh, no, we had to pre-record it, there's no doubt. Otherwise, you'd go crazy. So to make up for that, I've been answering your questions online as you've been asking them. And I'll probably still have about 30 minutes where I'm answering questions after this webinar. So send in your questions now, and, and uh, as well as your comments. If you have a long story to tell, as some of you do, I'll get, have to get back with you later. I answer the shorter questions as quickly as possible. And you can also post your stories on Facebook where people where people can see them. Okay, well, I think that about does it for today, and I thank you for your time. If you learned something, I'm very glad to have been part of that experience. We're going to have a great time together, I promise you. I, I hope that you'll join the group and invite your friends for whom you get $5 for each one who subscribes. Hey, let's have some fun with this. I'm going to sign off now, but I'm going to spend a, a few minutes answering questions for you on the chat line, and I'll leave that special up during the time. After that, i got to go home, and <laughs> it'll course will go back to up to 149 which is still a great bargain by the way so i'm looking forward to seeing you in the next week in session number one and take care everyone and god bless